Hi, welcome back to I Confess with Travis. I'm your host, Travis Bartlett. And today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how other people cannot seem to get a house because, well, the housing marketing is a bit ridiculous and it's getting too high to buy a house. So, this is going to be a very interesting story and I have a feeling that we're all going to agree on this. When I turned 24, I had a dream that I wanted to buy a house, get married, and even start a family. But the money that we're making in all of these jobs, which I will talk to you about in the next story, is, you know, the house marketing, like I said, is, a, is ridiculously high and no one nowadays can even afford it. I wanted to start a family, buy a house, get married, but I feel like the housing marketing was basically ruining my life because I had all this planned out because now it's like, it's hard for people to, you know, get a house nowadays, especially the money we're making at all these jobs. And I was just thinking, you know, and this is just, you know, hyp hypothetical, general, you know, whatever. This isn't just made up or whatever. But if I was running the housing marketing, I would lower every single housing payment. And the reason why is because it'll make it easier for people to actually buy a house, maybe rent, so they can actually have enough money to get on their feet and, you know, do whatever they want. My parents were nice enough to let me live in this house rent-free. And I'm going to tell you this. I have been living in my parents' house since the day I was born until, like I said, I wanted to move out at 24. And I'm still living in my parents' house at the age of 33. Now, I understand that, you know, for a guy like me who should not be living at their parents' house at the age of their 30s, but it's not really a choice I had. I mean, yes, I was struggling on trying to find a house. Yes, I was mad because I couldn't seem to find a house that was like maybe closer to the price. Um, I couldn't, you know, afford rent because, you know, I've gotten to where I've been jumping from job to job to job, buying stuff because I have, um, problems. Like, I have a shopping problem. So, then I just, like, gave up on buying houses because I got to the point where, I started buying things because, you know, I've been doing it for reverse psychology. And I know I should have saved up, but I didn't. Because I did talk to my sister um, yesterday. And even though she's moved out because she's got a boyfriend and, you know, she's got a child of her own. I understand if you ever own a house, it's expensive. But then, you know, once you get a house, you got to think about the bills, the mortgage or rent or whatever you're getting for the house is, I understand it's completely ridiculous. I mean, I remember I was watching a video and I don't know, I think it was like in Las Vegas. There was a video on TikTok in Las Vegas. They said they had the highest rent that was like $4,000. And I'm over here thinking like, who in the right mind has $4,000 worth of rent? Nobody. I mean, I feel like this is basically like us living in California where you're buying, let's say, a two-bedroom house with one bath for at least a million dollars. And 1,000 square foot house is only like a million dollars in California. But here in Georgia and some other places, 
where you get cheaper, where you can get rent up to like, like $800 to $2,000 a month. All I can say is it's the jobs that a lot of people are working at is getting to where they're not even paying people enough to, you know, pay the bills or get a house or rent or, you know, buy whatever you want and then you don't even have money for it, you know? Like, I don't want to make this sound stupid and dumb, but it's like when you're working at a job and even though you do get paid, it feels like you don't get paid at all. And the reason why I'm saying this, you got bills, you got rent, you got you know, house mortgage and house payments and utilities you got to pay for. Then you got your car payments, your, um, then you got groceries you got to pay for. And what does that leave you? Maybe like nothing. I mean, you could be making like two, $3,000 a month and all that would be gone in one month for a house. And and also cars as well with insurance and other stuff. I mean, you may not even have like money in your pocket. You may not even have cash. Me, I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest. I might have maybe like a couple dollars here and there. It might be like one, two or three dollars or even five dollars. That might last me for like the entire year. And I know what you guys are thinking. Y'all are probably thinking like, how is $5 going to last you for a year if that's all you have in your wallet, even though you got a debit card and credit card? That's another thing. When you have a credit card and debit card, you're going to be blowing money left and right. So it's basically you're like spending like $500 to at least $1,000, you know, depending on the day weeks or even months and you don't even realize you spent that much you know and all i can say is buying or renting a house it's like a struggle if you're one of those people who's still trying to look for a house i know some people nowadays are actually living at their parents house rent free i know i told you that but be mindful that you have loving parents who is letting you stay in their house for free so you can make enough money to where maybe you can actually find a place of your own. And I know some parents out there are kicking their kids out at the age of 18 because they think like, oh, well, you know, our kids are old enough. They're old enough to get their own house. They're old enough to get an apartment or whatever. But just imagine like you kick your kids out at 18. They may not even have money to survive on their own. And then you got people who are actually living in cars, RVs, buses, whatever, because they don't have an actual place to live. I was talking to at least a few people. I've had some people come up to me and say, you know, it's not so bad being homeless. Well, if you like to be homeless, that's up to you. I'm not trying to criticize. I'm not trying to be mean or whatever. And I'm lucky that I actually have parents who are actually letting me live their house rent free until I can try to save up some money. Because I remember I was talking to my sister the other day and she said, well, let's say like you get paid every like every week, you would have to put $100 into your savings account which was actually a smart idea. But see, what I did is that like, let's say if I had $2,000 in my checking account, I will transfer 1,000 into my savings. But then, but then you realize when you got monthly bills and payments, like I said earlier, you may not even have a checking account. So it's like you might as well just not put $1,000 in your savings. You know, it's like, you might as well not even have a saving. But my sister was right. I didn't even think about putting $100 in my savings every week, which is actually a smart idea. So like, for example, let's say you made $500 in one week. Then you would take $100 out and you put that to the side in your savings. And every week as you get paid, you put more 
$100 every week into your savings. And then you'll have more money to save up, to get you a place to stay, get you a place to live. See, I had this thing because, you know, like I said about the whole housing marketing was gone through the roof. I had this idea. I wanted to buy me an old school bus and turn it into an RV so I can actually have a place of my own to stay. If I want to go on vacation, then yes, I'll use the bus to let's go to Florida so you can save money so you don't have to spend money to go to a hotel and stay for like a weekend or a week, you know, because that can cost like a thousand dollars just to get a hotel. People nowadays are trying to beat the system. So let's say instead of like buying a house or renting an apartment or something, you can just buy an RV and live in it. And I thought that's actually a smart idea because that's what I wanted to do. Well, even though I don't have much money in my savings account, there's really not much for me to do other than just live in my parents' house. And I know I've gotten on to my parents, like I've yelled at them, saying like, I want a bigger room. Cause you know, ever since when we, when I was living in Atlanta, I had a room that was kind of like so big, you could fit like a hundred bodies in there and you still have room to walk around and stuff. I mean, the house I was in, it was like an 1800 square feet house. And like I said, every room was like spread out. You had more space, you had a lot of, you know, room to do stuff. But then me and my family went and moved to Macon. And then all of a sudden, then I end up living in this house that me and my parents moved into here in Macon which was a 2,100 square foot house and the bedrooms are so fucking tiny. I mean, when I tell you how tiny it is, I feel like I'm actually in a mansion's walk-in closet. I mean, yes, I might have a little room to like maybe like walk towards my bed to my door, but it's just, I just need more room because even though I'm doing like social media my entire office has been taken over my entire bedroom i'm getting to where my bedroom is about to become a hoarder and a storage unit where i will not be able to you know live in my bedroom i mean i understand a lot of people are going to be like well you need to take some stuff out well i don't know where else to put it my parents are nice enough to let me have some appliances i've got a couple furniture. I got a few kitchen stuff. One day, if I ever do move out, I don't have to sell anything. You know, I'm just going to keep it, put stuff in room. Because what I want to do is I want to get me like a two bedroom house or an apartment, whatever. And, you know, I want to use one of the bedrooms as an office so I can separate my office and my bedroom so I'm not cramped in one room, you know, cause like I said, my office is taking over my entire bedroom at my parents' house cause I don't have anywhere else to put things. It wasn't really my choice because when my sister was pregnant at the time, she got the other room, which was a little bit bigger. But then I told my mom, I said, you know, when my sister doesn't live here, my nephew only comes over every once a week just to spend the night with us on the weekends. And I told my mom, I said, well, why don't I just let Cameron have my tiny old bedroom and I can just take, you know, Cameron's and my sister's old bedroom. But then they were like, no, we're not gonna move furniture around. No, we're not gonna do this. Like, you know what? If you guys are gonna make me mad, then I, I mean, I have no choice to, just to move out. So like I said, I'm focusing on trying to find me an apartment. I do remember telling you guys a story about the temp service, about how I almost got me an apartment, but then I lost it because they didn't want to give me any proof of income, which is stupid because like I said, it don't matter how long you've been working with the company, it don't matter if you've been there for a day or if you've been there for a week or a month, 
you should still get some kind of proof of income so you can get a house. A lot of people think, you know, like if you start your job on the first day, you're going to buy yourself an apartment or a house or rent or whatever. That's what they thought. But I've been saving up my money to get a house and you're telling me you don't want to give me any proof, which is plain stupid. But all I can say is I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try to save more to the end of the year. I was kind of thinking about getting two jobs, but I don't know how that's going to work. I'm going to have to just come up with something. I mean, unless if I decide to sell my, you know, use boxers or socks or let's say what's to do only fans or feet finder picks or whatever or do porn just to make money. I mean, hey, I will do it. I just got to come up with something, you know, try to find a way to make money so I can get my own place. But all I can say is I'm going to stay positive, try my best to save up as much as I can for an apartment. That's all I can say. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take a break and I will be right back to tell you another story about how jobs are so strict. Welcome back. I'm going to be talking about how jobs are so strict nowadays. It's ridiculous. So you're going to understand how jobs are and how their rules and policies actually work. Now, the reason why um, the jobs like they are today is because they're trying to make more rules and more policies, which obviously makes no sense. Some of the rules could be just kind of pointless. Some of the rules could be just dumb and stupid. But they don't realize that, let's say, like, you work at a job, and let's say you break one measly rule, and then it's like you get a write-up, which is kind of dumb. And it was like... The time when I told you I was actually working at Ready Pack, they were so strict on their rules. Like, there was this one time they were telling us about, they said that one person was in the parking lot with flip-flops on, sandals, or whatever. They Either way, they were like open-toed shoes. And they said that this person's uh, flip-flop or whatever their open-toed shoes were decide to break. And he... Or she, or I should say they, um, accidentally stumped their toe. And they decide to make that a rule by saying that we're no longer allowed to wear flip-flops or sandals or any kind of open-toe shoes in the parking lot. And I remember when they got on to us about that, I said it's not like we're going in the freezer with flip-flops, open-toed shoes, or anything. And they just said, well, they just made a rule. They say, if you come in this building with flip-flops on, you're going to get a write-up, which is kind of dumb, just because somebody stumped their toe, which is really, really dumb. And I understand when things happen, you know, it happens, but I don't think that should be a rule. I remember um, when I worked at Kroger, I don't know if I actually told you guys this um, in the story. I feel like I might have, but I don't know. I think it might have been one of my YouTube videos or whatever. Um, I don't remember, but we had this new um, store manager, and apparently she made up this rule where she said that not one person allowed to go outside with a water bottle because you know how hot it gets outside and they were talking about well you know customers were complaining about us bringing water bottles outside I mean like it's not like we brought in soda or alcohol or anything in these bottles and they said it was considered a corporate rule, which for some reason I thought was so stupid. They could have had a lawsuit because you know how hot it gets in the summertime. And I basically got on 
like I literally, I mean, I literally yelled at the manager and said, you know, this is strictly, you know, illegal. Like you don't give anybody water while they're outside pushing cards and you're making it seem like that we have to drink water inside the building because you're saying that customers were complaining about what we got in our water bottles. First of all, customers don't even care what we got in our water bottles. I mean, it's not like we brought in vodka or any, or tequila or any kind of alcohol. But I just thought that's just a little strange because I was just thinking like, what if someone actually passed out, had a heat stroke and passed out? They would have sued the entire store. And it would have been, you know, the management's fault. But I don't really think corporate had anything with this because if they did, someone would have gotten in trouble. I remember when I started working at Bass Pro Shop, this was that day when me and my family had moved to Macon from Atlanta. Bass Pro had this uh, strict rule, like let's say if you're gonna leave at nighttime at a job that you're working at, they did this thing where let's say if you walk out the door, you have to check to make sure you don't have anything stolen or anything illegal or any weapons before you go home because they want to make sure that you know you're not going to get fired for it and i thought well that's kind of understandable especially a lunchbox they'll go through a lunchbox too but then they said one of the associates complained about it and then they just said that they were no longer going to check to see what people have in their bags i don't know the whole story i don't know exactly what happened but then I started working at this warehouse and they are so strict. When I tell you how strict they are, they're basically telling you that you're not allowed to have anything in your pockets. You're not allowed to even have a fan around your neck. You're not even allowed to even have chapstick. And see, knowing me, I have to have things in my pocket. All I carry in my pocket is my phone, my car keys, my chapstick, and even a tissue. Because knowing me, I have allergies. And yes, I have seasonal allergies, which I will constantly blow my nose, basically about constantly. And the chapstick, I mean, I hate when my lips get so chapped because they always say, well, you have to wait until you go on break to put on, you know, your chapstick and all this stuff. And I thought, you know what? And I just thought that's just a bit ridiculous. And I mean, I hate having chapped lips. So if my lips get really, really, really chapped, I'm going to go berserk. And I mean, I will go off. And if I don't have a tissue in my pocket, yes, I mean, I will literally start blowing my nose on my shirt. I mean, I'm not saying it like that, but I just think it's just stupid that you're not allowed to have anything. And like I said, I feel like I was back at Ready Pack where you couldn't have not one thing in your pocket. And then to top it off, this warehouse that I'm actually working at, you know how like when people would, let's say, go to the bathroom and let's say... You were in the bathroom for like 15 minutes. They're talking about that. They're going to write down and say, okay, well, this is how long you were in the bathroom. You know, we're going to go ahead and write you up because you were supposed to be on the floor doing, you know, whatever. And, you know, I mean, I didn't quite understand that. I mean, if you really had to go to the bathroom then you really had to go. But you're basically going to time somebody for being, let's say like five minutes off the floor, 10 minutes or even 20 minutes off the floor and you're in the bathroom for who knows how long, you know? Because the reason why they're so strict is because they don't want to lose a contract with the building which is so dumb because like, what if you have to take a longer bathroom break? I mean, 
yeah, I mean, there's people in there that might take a long time to use a bathroom. There's people in there that might take a short time to use a bathroom, which I just thought was just a bit ridiculous. And then I was told, which I think this is a complete lie, a complete ridiculous, stupid story. But somebody told me this story. They said the reason why they outlaw these box cutter knives is because they said that one person decided to catch a knife, which also cut their hand. First of all, I don't believe that. And second of all, if you really want to cut yourself, then you must have a problem. And you must have got rid of it just for everybody not allowed to actually have a pocket knife. I think that's a little strange. I think that's a little bit weird. But what do you guys think? And all I can say is, if you're actually working at a strict job, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm not going to work here because of the rules. I'm not going to work here because of the policies. I'm not going to work here because they're strict. Well, you know what? People say the same thing about management. People say things about not getting paid enough. And you know what? I actually do agree with them. And see, I've gotten to where I have been jumping from job to job to job. And I feel like a foster child, instead of like jumping from job to job, I feel like a foster child who's basically jumping from house to house to house. But instead of me jumping from house to house to house, it's more like me jumping from job to job to job. Trying to find a job where there's no strict rules. Trying to find a job where you can make at least about 20 or even $30 an hour, which is kind of impossible to find in certain jobs. But I know some people probably could find a job with that kind of pay, but... With the pay now, is not even enough. With jobs nowadays, when they're actually wanting to pay people to, when they want to pay you, it's not even enough to actually get a house. Like I said in this episode, you know, you might even have money to go live in your car. And if you're one of those people who just now started working at your job or you're new at this job, or anywhere, you know, if it's your first time job, give you a little heads up. You're not alone. You're going to be working in a strict area where you're not going to be able to have, you know, a job where you can keep. And I know a lot of people are going to get to where it's not all fun and games when you're at a job. Then they want to start doing these point systems. Like, for example, this job I'm working at right now. And for what I was told, which is going to sound completely ridiculous, but also kind of dumb, their point system, depending on what job you work at, you could probably get up to like so many points. I came into work at 745 every morning. And I remember that there was one of the managers who came up to me and said that I've been coming in late three days by two minutes late two measly minutes you would think two measly minutes wouldn't count right you would think that's just nothing well with the newer point system instead of you having to wait let's say seven minutes before and seven minutes after or let's say if you were 15 minutes late you would um automatically get a point well, the point system that I'm actually with, if you were late by 30 seconds or if you clock in right on the dot or if you were late for two measly minutes, you get half a point, which was completely dumb and stupid, which I told the manager that. Then I contacted corporate to see if this is all true. They said, yes, it was true. And then I told corporate, person I said well every job I work at like let's say if you clocked in at eight o'clock in the morning you can clock in at like seven minutes early which would be like 
7.53 in the morning. You can clock in on the dot and you can clock in seven minutes late and you're still okay. But if you were like 15 minutes late, like let's say you clocked in at 8.08 or 8.15, then yes, you automatically get half a point. And I understand other points, like let's say if you were there for like half a day, you get half a point. You do a no call, no show, you get a whole point. If you do, um, you know, let's say you, you know, decide to show up whenever, you're automatically going to get a point. And then they'll say things like, if you get to a certain amount of points, they're going to write you up. And then the next time you're late again, that's going to be your last point, And then they're going to let you go. And the reason why people are doing point systems is because they want people to stay and keep their jobs. Which, you know, which a lot of people nowadays, they're not going to keep their jobs. They might stay for like maybe a couple weeks or maybe to like a month or so. And then it's like, I quit. And then they want to find another job. If you're just now starting getting a job, just give you guys a little heads up. I might have actually told you a little bit of information about how jobs are very strict when it comes to point systems and, you know, and how strict rules are. Because what I'm going to say is they're making rules after rules after rules that literally are just plain dumb and stupid. Now, I understand if there's certain types of rules you have to follow and policies you have to follow, I can understand that. But if something actually happened at work, like let's say you slipped and fell, they're going to make that a rule and said, like, let's say if you slip and fall, you might get it written up or whatever. I don't know. But all I can say is be careful. And... Don't lose your job just because they're strict and you also get points for being while working at a job. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm sorry I didn't get to make any phone calls for this episode. I thought I can go ahead and just try to confess about two things on here. But yeah, if you guys want to be on my podcast, please text 478 901 Four 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 five, that's four seven eight nine zero one four 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 five, and I will talk to you guys next week.